This is a test. I just hope the mics sound good and that we get an episode out. That's all I really want. Testing, testing, one, two, three. That is so professional. Let's do this episode, baby. Welcome to On the Up and Up with Patrick and Talisha. And today's episode is Help! Why won't my husband express his feelings to me? And much more. But before we get started, we have shout outs and reviews. So, what we got, baby? All right. So, my shout outs go to Davida, Latifa, Mandy, Allison, Lynn, and Taylor. And my shout outs go to Keita Jackson 24, E Man, Reggie Mack. Reggie Mack said, I remind him of Kev on stage. Thank you, sir. And Trophy Wife 915. Thank you guys for interacting with our social media and our Facebook. Go like our Facebook page at Patrick and Talisha. Hit us up on Instagram at Patrick and Talisha. And me at I am Pat Ratliff and Talisha at the farm d mommy the baby is waking up now we have to go get him we have to get him before he jumps off the bed he's screaming is she gonna save him is she going to save him she mommy is there baby did not fall off the bed and we are clear to record with the baby in hand i was watching the baby monitor that we have in our recording studio Oh, okay. We had to call in some reinforcements. My mom came over to help us out. So she has the children and we will go on with the show. All right. So we are going to do our review. Um, this review was actually um, written on August the 6th, but we didn't know who the writer was. Now that we know who the writer is, we're going to uh, read this one again. All right. So it says, so good. Y'all are one of my favorite podcasts to listen to now. I love the dynamic, the conversation so far, everything about it. And I'm taking a lot of it for growth, and that is what I love the most. The latest episode about staying sexy for your spouse is some good stuff. Patrick is hilarious, by the way, but I love his journaling idea about writing with the positives and negatives about his day down and what he takes away from the day. Talisha is so country and goofy, lol. I love it. But y'all are so real, and it's a lot to gain from these conversations. Keep up the great work, guys. You definitely have a fan here. All right. That is from Keita Jackson. That is who we have revealed who it was, Keita Jackson 24. So, and she's been interacting. She has emailed the show. Yes, ma'am. She has followed us on social media at Patrick and Talisha. She has been interacting with the stories we've been posting up there. Like, she is in it to win it. And that's why for the week of September, what week is this? Shoot, I don't even know. Is it September 18th? 18th, 19th. The week of September 19th, Keita Jackson 24. You are on the up and up with Patrick and Talisha's Listener of the Week. Listener of the Week. Hey, listener of the week. Hey, we about to take your pictures and post it on the Instagram and the Facebook. And we about to make you look good this week. It's all about you this week. Yeah, but. Get to make the fancy graphics. <laughs> but yes, thank you for listening to our show, participating with us, emailing in the show at podcast at Talisha Patrick and podcast at Patrick. And- <laughs> <laughs> podcast. <laughs> podcast at Patrick and Talisha dot com. Email it. Email it. <laughs> thank you, Kita. We yeah. love you, girl. Yes. So with. That being said, how was your week? So, we, new segment, new segment. All right, so we call it, got a new segment of like, what's on the up and up for you? So, mm. we're going to review our week. So, last week, what was on the up and up for you, T? All right, so we got to do something that I love to do. Patrick doesn't really love to do it, but he does it and he obliges. Anyways, um, we got to take family portraits uh, this past weekend. 
with my girl Darian at Darian Marie Photography. She has been rocking with us for the last three years, and we got to go an hour and nine minutes away, which really turned into like an hour and 30 minutes away because we got lost whenever we went up the mountain, went to Caesars Head um, State Park, and that was like a really beautiful experience. I did not know that place really existed. What about you, Patrick? Yeah, the mountains were very beautiful. I mean, they were gorgeous. Lots of twists and turns up in the mountains. Yeah. All that to go take some pictures. All that to take some pictures. Hey, but thank you for loving my extraness. I cannot wait to see the pictures. So that was definitely a highlight of my week. And on the down and down, um, if that's, is that part of our segment? Yeah, down, down, down and down. All right, the down and down. Uh, Rowan was nursing on Tuesday night. And I was not really supporting him that well because he had kind of fallen asleep. And I think I dozed off as well. And my arm kind of slipped and his head kind of slipped with it. Both of y'all fell asleep. You fell asleep at the wheel. That's what you did. I fell asleep at the wheel, dog. You fell asleep at the wheel. And I got a head-on collision <laughs> with two little baby teeth. Um. Oh, my gosh. It hurt so bad. So you ripped a nip? Oh, yeah. And... Oh my gosh! I'm I was like, ah, get this baby off of me! <laughs> it was so painful. Um, so I went to work on Wednesday and I get ready to pump. Like, okay, so I nursed him throughout the night on Tuesday night, and I thought it was you know obviously painful, but I can handle it. Wednesday when I had to pull out that pump, mm, who oh yeah. it was on a whole nother level. Um, they're very painful. What was the pain on a scale of zero to ten? Zero Shoot. being no pain at all, ten being excruciating. <laughs> it was excruciating. It was a ten. But but see, whenever I think about like the pain scale of zero to ten, like I'm always like a a hard but and I'm always like, if it's a ten, you can't freaking talk. Like, did you mean you did you need you morphine? Talk. Did you need morphine? No, I didn't need morphine. Okay. So I was one ten. I'm just being dramatic. It was I guess on a realistic scale it'd probably be a seven though. It hurt. It hurt. So, I am so thankful that I'm in the job that I'm in now with the supervisor that I have now because she was totally understanding and I had to um, sit on the bench because I was out for an injury. You were injured. Um, <laughs> so, I had to sit on the bench for a couple of days and work from home. So, thank God because uh, that would have been real Thank bad. God for flexibility. Thank God for flexibility. Absolutely. So, that was my down and down. But yeah, lesson learned. Don't freaking fall asleep unless your arm is supported. While you're, you're nursing a baby. While you're nursing, yes. Don't sleep while nursing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, don't drink while driving. Exactly. Don't Don't sleep while nursing. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. dangerous. Not unless you're supported. We gonna get. We need to make a t-shirt. Right. We need to make that t-shirt. What was on the up and up for you this week? On the up and up for me was getting to see we have so i'm a part of a like leadership group in our city greenville south carolina called leadership greenville and it's like 63 leaders like the the best of the best right the the top of the class the cream of the crop and i got selected to get in there so we have been because you're the best of the best we have been learning about everything the inner workings of the city we visited prisons like we visited the jail system we learned about the homeless we learned about poverty we did poverty simulations i mean we learned about the school district we went to the st- learned about state government it's basically like everything if you're going to be a leader in a city you have to be well you need is like basically mandatory for you or if you're going to run for like some public office uh, you need to go through like a leadership program hosted by someone's chamber of commerce they're all they're in a whole bunch of cities but greenville is like a, it's kind of a big deal and so we come in and we were the class who got hit with the coronavirus so we haven't seen each other in months and then this week we had our last like leadership retreat like virtual retreat which was supposed to happen back in may but because of covid we couldn't like actually go to uh our escape or our uh, destination yeah our retreat so we had it virtually and then like everyone was just on there like saying what and it was the closing retreat so basically we just went around everybody like all 60 of us was on there and we had like give our two minute spill of like what we took out of our leadership journey and going through the program and everyone and it's so man these people are elite like really like when you walk in that room you're you're instantly like man i don't belong here but and that was the common theme throughout what people learned. That everyone suffered from imposter syndrome. And I'm looking at these people like, wow, like you are. And some people were like when like they're like leaders of the leaders mm. and they suffer from imposter syndrome. So it just really made like a, a lot of people comfortable. It was like, wait, we were humans. 
we are humans. We all experience some of the similar emotions of like feeling like we don't belong in the room and just hearing people's stories and what they gained out of the program and how they're going to move forward. Like people quit jobs or like, look, this job means nothing to me. I'm going to go into public service because we mm -hmm. see where people in the city is actually hurting. So people have like, they've dropped it. They dropped the cushy job. And now they're like, man, I'm doing public service because I really want to make a difference with my work. So that was, I mean, people, and there was a bunch of stories like that. And so just hearing that and just being able to interact with people because COVID has been messing me up. I'm an extrovert. I need people. So I really needed that because going to what was on the down and down for me was not dropping an episode. I don't know if y'all even noticed. We didn't drop an episode. I was super stressed out and like overwhelmed from that. I was like, oh my gosh, these people are, they're never going to listen again. So that was on the down and down for me being stressed out. Like I can't get the episode out. Oh my goodness. I was just tired. I was just like, I am tired. Yeah. So that was on the down and down for me. But what I learned was like, hey, you got you got to take breaks. Mm -hmm. You have got to take breaks, and that's it. Yeah, you got to take breaks and rest. Sometimes if you're gonna be in this thing for the long the long game, it's the marathon. You got to pace yourself, and you have to take breaks when necessary. We had a bye week. <laughs> yeah, we had a bye week. Yeah, cool. Yeah, we even had a bye the NFL, week. even the NFL pros, they got a bye week. Yeah, and so. I want to update you guys on what I'm doing in the Bible, homeboy. So my Bible reading plan, I am on day 40, day 40. So I hit the end of Genesis, the end of Genesis where Jacob died, Joseph died. And one thing that stood out to me at the end of Genesis is like, all right, so y'all remember like Jacob had like 12 sons, 12 sons of Israel, and they sold the youngest one, Joseph, into slavery. And then... The slave's wife was like, I'm going to sleep with you. He's like, I don't want to sleep with you. And she went and go told the master that, hey, he tried to sleep with me. She lied on him. They threw him in jail. And then Pharaoh was like, hey, man, someone interpreted my dreams. So he interpreted the dreams. And so Pharaoh was like, all right, go, go run Egypt. And his brothers was like, oh, my goodness, that's our brother. He's not even mad at us anymore. Oh, and he forgave all his brothers and whatnot. So we got we get to the end of that story and Jacob's about to die. Jacob dies. He bl blesses all his sons. Right. And so we get to the end of it and his brothers go back to Joseph and they like, dog, daddy dead now. Uh, he going to be mad at us now. He about to get us. He runs Egypt now. He really going. We sold him into slavery. He going to get us. He going to get us. And but Joseph was like, hey, man, don't I told y'all not to worry about it for as for you, you meant evil to me, but God meant it for good. So it was like his brother sold this man into slavery. But if it wouldn't have happened, all the people in Egypt would have died of starvation. So, man, I was just like, I actually wrote in my Bible for like the first time. I was like, I highlighted that verse and circled it, underlined it because people are out there. They will for them. They meant to do you evil. Mm -hmm. But that might be the exact thing that God wants to happen to you so that he can work his plan. As for you, you meant evil for me, but God meant it for good. That's why all these people in Egypt are living today. And the Egyptians did not even like God. They didn't even believe in God. So that just shows God's power to like, he, he will even bless his enemies. He blesses the world, even if you believe or not. So I really took that. And then we moved into Moses <laughs> and I, I did the Moses thing and I got to the golden calf. We's on the golden calf. All right. Moses got the people out of the Egypt land, right? So Pharaoh, go down. Moses, way down to Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh to let my people go. So he let his people <laughs> go. And they out, out in the wilderness. And then Moses goes up to Mount Sinai and stuff. And then God's like telling him all these rules, all these laws you got to do. And so the people in Israel, the Israelites was like, man, Moses done disappeared up there. So we're going to get this golden calf. So take your earrings off. We're going to turn it into a golden calf dog. And they've like, oh, the golden calf brought us out of Israelite, out of Egypt, out of slavery. The golden calf did it. Not God. We cool. And then God's sitting up there with Moses. He's like, dog, get your people. Your people down there worshiping the golden calf. I'm about to kill them. I'm about to kill them right now. And then Moses is like, nah, God, please don't kill my folk, dog. You, you said we're going to inherit the land. We're going to be good for generations, man. And God was like, all right, I'll let it slide. I'll let it slide. And then Moses gets done with his instructions and he goes down. And he actually sees the folks worshiping the golden calf. And he was like, seriously, y'all like y'all embarrassing me in front of company. Y'all really embarrassing me in front of company. So Moses got mad. Moses got mad. He threw down the 10 commandments, broke the 10 commandments. He's like, man, 
And then he told the Levites, he's like, hey, y'all, get your swords, kill these folk. He's, <laughs> like, the he's like, I, he's like, y'all got to go. Y'all got to fall. Yep. Y'all got to fall. Because I tried to save y'all from God, but y'all done made me mad now because y'all really embarrassing me in front of company. Embarrassing me in front of the man. So I, I love that. So that was a good story because I didn't know the golden calf story like that. So I'm just really learning as much in like the Bible. It's, it's really fascinating because we do the same stuff. It's like, oh, God's timing. Oh, we're tired of waiting on God's plan. So we're going to go off and do what we want to do. Mm-hmm. And you mess up his plan. God got a plan for you if you don't intervene. Yes. Wait. Stop. Wait. And listen and watch for what he does and how he moves in your life. So that's what I got out of the Bible this week is fascinating. It's fantastic. I'm loving it so far. Uh, the Holy Bible app's been amazing for me. So, man, that's what's been going on for me this week. Uh, yeah, long-winded, but, hey, I got to let y'all know. Got to let the people know. Got to let the people know. And shout out to my LB out there, E-Man, who was like, hey, man, I love the Bible stories, man. Appreciate it. It's dope. I like it. And that's why I tell y'all the Bible stories from my perspective, even though I'm not some biblical scholar or anything. But God uses everybody to get his message out there. So he is using me to tell it the way I see it. And I hope it's right. So don't be, e- don't email me like, well, that's not right about the golden <laughs> calf. Oh, how dare you blasphemy. Yeah. Uh, foolishness. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I ain't going to hear it. You're going to get what I, what I interpret. Yeah. I see it. And don't forget to go on iTunes, Apple iTunes and leave us a five star rating and a review so we can read it on the show we want to know what y'all think about us man we want to know because if we don't know we're going to be doing some flashback reviews yeah and <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and, and check us out on instagram hit the facebook page patrick and talisha and so and because we're going to start asking questions like what do y'all want us to talk about as far as like marriage and relationships because we want to hear from y'all guys because we want to be talking about what y'all actually want to hear instead of making this stuff up from my hairs we want to hear from y'all man so hit us up and when I ask the question out there, y'all better answer because I'm going to be looking for it. Or I'm going to come DM y'all or something. Right. <laughs> We're going to do a drive by and DM. Yep. Yep. All right. So jumping into the topic of today is why don't the men or why won't my husband share his feelings with me? Which is very valid. It's very valid. I was about to say, how you going to come up and say it like that? It's very valid. It, it, it is valid uncomfortable outside the traditional man's comfort zone but it is a legit question because it has brought up issues and challenges in our marriage personally and as we continue to explore the audience out there it has come up several times more than a uh, lots of times a lot of times and it's a huge problem in relationships and especially marriages because guys express themselves differently and women want to want the keys to the inside and they're (laughs) mad when they get locked out and they start banging and knocking at the door like the daggone police (laughs) And, (laughs) and i just like first question for me is like okay why is it important to the women who we're married to that we express our feelings? So to start it off, if y'all would leave the door open, we wouldn't have to be banging on it and trying to be like, let me in. It's important because in a relationship, you definitely impact the person that you're, you're with. So if it's obvious that something's not right, then of course for me, I'm going to ask you, you know, like what's going on? And then here we go. Oh, nothing. I'm fine. And it's like, okay, well, sometimes, you know, they say actions speak louder than words. Your words might not coincide with what you're truly exhibiting. And so when you, when you see that as a wife, it makes you be like, well, no, I know something's wrong, so let me in. If you can't tell your wife what's going on, that might be a big problem. Like That might be a red flag for something else. Um, now, I'm not saying that you have to tell all your problems to your wife because your wife is most likely not a counselor or therapist. Um, 
But there are a lot of things that you should be able to tell your wife. Now, maybe she not might not be able to help you to the fullest extent, but you should be able to tell your wife what's going on. So that you can have more closeness and try to understand. Yeah, because your your wife is your helpmate. So if if we don't know what's going on, how can we help you? Mm, that's important. But the re- and the reason I ask is because, like I said, when we're going out there and looking on, I get our social media, just like people in general. Like one huge issue is like I don't, I can't get to my husband, and so we have questions about. Like I said, I have questions about it. Um, is it because like women express themselves differently? Is it how they're brought up that they they're cool with expressing their feelings and emotions, and men? aren't from like childhood and are you just being nosy all up in business and stuff like that why is it important why is it just like yeah like why is it so important because are what have you seen negative effects of men not sharing sharing their feelings (laughs) um bottling it in does it explode like i and i don't even know if they just are we avoiding the explosion Mm-hmm. Or we avoid like what it like what else goes into it? I mean, shoot, those are all really, really good questions. Um, I think that for me, it's really important to be able to come to you and get you to share your feelings with me because I feel like we are best friends. So if I think about my best friend, like I'm gonna come to her and let her know what's going on with me, and same for you know, on the other side. So with you being my best friend, I'm going to come to you and let you know what's happening. And even more so than a a best friend that doesn't live with you. So it's one thing you have a roommate that's your best friend, but like, this is my husband. I, I live with you when you're my best friend. So some of those things that might, you know, sit on the surface are fine if someone doesn't live with you. But the things that are underlying the surface stuff, like if someone lives with you, you, you're going to know every bit of it. Or you're going to feel it at least. You might not know exactly what it's about, but you're going to feel it. Yeah, I think I think couples really, I mean, they know, but they don't want to like go around. They, they're not willing to walk into the landfill the minefield to step on that bomb that might be waiting on them that they can't see. Oh, they sense it. It's like, man, that might be a dangerous area. And I don't really want to walk through there because I don't know what's under that dirt. Uh Uh-huh. And it's like, don't ask, don't tell. Right, right, right. Don't ask, don't tell. But you sense it and it's having a like effect on the relationship. But But if everything's, what if the husband's happy and he can express his feelings. I think it's the negative. It's more the negative feelings. Yeah. Than the funny. or perceived negative feelings mm-hmm. than the perceived positive feelings. Yeah. Well, and whenever people are happy, most of the time you can tell if it's like, ha ha ha, I stay happy, or if it's like I'm genuinely happy. I'm happy to be alive. Like it radiates differently. Right. So there's nothing to discuss when I'm happy. There's always, but when it's something, uh oh, something's eating at you and it might be a problem or you're not your happy, jovial self, you're like, all right, we need to discuss this. Or you try to get it to get solved your way mm-hmm. by expressing one's feelings, maybe. I don't know. Like I said, I'm just so confused. But we want to talk about, like, I can share, like, while we don't. <laughs> Okay, I was love to hear that. Definitely, don't, while we don't express ourselves to like our wives and stuff, I have some ideas. I don't know all the answers, but I have some answers that we ha- that I have for the people out there, and just this is to be helpful to all couples out there who are struggling to like connect on a deeper level. Because ultimately, we like you can't experience the full joy without some of that pain. Or struggle that you might be going through because if you're holding in, you can't. You haven't 
you haven't felt all that energy. It's a process mm-hmm. to like feel it all out. It's a long, it's a longer process than what we actually when we don't have time to go out and dog on do all that processing because it just takes too much time. So, but first, but I look first reason that I know that I've seen and I've heard guys say, like, dude, if you express your emotions to your woman or wife, they will hold that bad boy against you mm-hmm. and they will see it as weakness and they'll bring it up. They'll use it against you. They'll hold it. We, you know, me and you used to collect ammunition. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, I got good ammunition for the next battle that we're going to have down the road. Yeah. And I was like, I ain't about to tell you that because you're going to use that as ammunition or something like that. Remember you got mad about that last time? I was like, I ain't going to do it. Huh. So they don't. So if they, and if they feel that you're going to use it down against you, I mean, it can come down to trust. Like they don't, they don't trust you with their emotions. Mm. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Back in, in the beginning of our relationship, Shit, we did. We used to try to collect that ammunition all the time. Like, oh, yep, you did this, and I'm going to use this against you in another argument. Um, I, I don't think we really try to collect ammunition anymore. Nah, this is um, before we were married. This is like the college years and yeah. stuff. We were trying to win. Oh, definitely. Shoot, you can't come to war and not be ready. So, whenever somebody messes up, you collected it because you never know when it is wartime. So, in a relationship that has not been uh, signed, sealed, delivered with marriage, Mm -hmm. I feel like that that probably is something that people still struggle with. And then sometimes people still take that ammunition and they carry it into their marriage and... In your marriage, the only war you should be having is a war against the devil, against the the real enemy. Your spouse is not your enemy. Mm-hmm. So, like, you have to team up with your spouse. And you can't be on the same team and collecting secret ammo, like, to blast your teammate. Right. Yeah, because his name, yeah. And you don't want to give up the ammunition. I'm not. If I, I really told you what I was thinking or what I was feeling. And I think. I don't even know it's about the expression. Because you can tell the mood. Like, I think men express themselves. I mean, they should, you just show it. You, you can, can see yep. anger. They're, well, they're really good at expressing anger. Uh, yeah. We're really good at expressing anger. Maybe not the. See, but anger is a secondary emotion. It's mm-hmm. not the primary emotion. You don't see something and get mad Mm -hmm. well you get mad but you miss a step yeah in between it was like oh you're mad because you're embarrassed you're mad because you're ashamed you're mad because you're uh the or some stress or Mm -hmm. some story that you told yourself that leads to you getting angry like it doesn't go from like uh the event happens and you go to anger It, it goes event happens you feel a certain way about it, mm-hmm. and that feeling causes the anger. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so, if if your wife was not a part of the something else happens, then they're like, oh, what's the anger about? Yeah, what's the anger about? Yeah, you can process it, yeah. And, I mean, sometimes when you're so mad, you might just have to take a step back, because maybe what you're feeling might be really, really heavy. And you are not willing to share that part of the load just yet. And that's okay, too. I think it's fine to take a step back. Because, you know, once that word vomit comes out, you can't take it back. You know, once the toothpaste is already squeezed, you can't put it back in the tube. Right. And so, whenever whenever I'm talking about, like, especially your feelings, you know, do all that, like, I still think that, if it's something that's going to be said that's hurtful towards the other person, it is a good idea to think about it. Think about how how you want to say it. Like, if it's, okay, I'm mad because I saw you eating a little Debbie cake and I know you gained 20 pounds and now I'm angry. Like, okay, how, how do I really want to word that? You know? Yeah. Like, but why are you... What's the emotion before you get angry? 
uh, maybe a lack of control, maybe um, judgment, maybe judgment. Like, I can't believe they're freaking eating the little Debbie K. They just said that they gained 20 pounds. And now they're doing something that's the complete opposite of what what is part of their goal. And like you said, maybe it might be because you're trying to put your stuff on them. It's like, if I said I gained 20 pounds and I'm trying to lose weight, I wouldn't eat a little Debbie cake. But maybe this person is eating a little Debbie cake. I mean, most of the time it's bigger than a little Debbie cake. I'm just throwing this little random yeah. example out. Yeah. But it's just, you know, sometimes I think it is really good to just take a step back and and analyze it first like wives and i'm guilty of it too we want to know it right then and there what's wrong what's wrong they might not need to tell us right that second i do think they should tell us what's going on but maybe they don't need to tell us right but by that time we've already fixed it oh by that time it's like all right fixed it over it cool i got i got to take my breather i'm not mad anymore all right let's move on i fixed it in my head i've worked on it myself because like i said they don't fully trust you to share that part with you because it's not a trustful it's not a trustful environment well maybe it's maybe it's not necessarily trust maybe no i'm telling you i'm I'm telling you like they don't trust you to fully do that or or like i said and like they've already fixed it themselves like men we like to fix things ourselves yeah we like it's like all right because we get a, a sense of accomplishment or, or pride in fixing things mm. and being logical and be like, all right, I solved this. Or maybe you didn't solve it, but you buried it and it's, you don't have to resolve it. I mean, or at that point, it is resolved until it comes back later. And I think that's the issue is like, this is going to be, it's a cycle or a repeatable pattern yeah. that this thing keeps coming up. It's like people have like situations that just wreak havoc on their relationship. Mm. <laughs> it just wreaks havoc every time. Like a family, like family situation. Oh, like our church situation and stuff. Like, oh, I don't want to be a part of the church. Why well, you don't want to be a part of the church? Oh, blah, blah, blah. And I say what I got to say. But then it's like, all right. Or I feel like I give in. I give in. We'll go to your church. All right. Mm-hmm. But then the pattern repeats itself. I don't want to tell you what I really think. Okay. So what, what would you, what would be your answer as far as like, taking a step back like maybe should they not take a step back should they just like say it say it and then see what happens yeah but that might hurt feelings okay tell me more about that they don't want to hurt your feelings just like the great philosopher oh here we go the great philosopher (laughs) jody from baby boy as he was arguing with the mother of his child yvette it was like look i lie to you because i care about your feelings I am out here telling these other hoes the truth, <laughs> but because I lie to you, because I lie to you, because I love you. All mm-hmm. right, it's it's clear that you cannot handle the truth, so don't mess with it, Yvette. And I thought, as a teenager growing up, you know, I was like, that makes perfect sense. Right, as a teenager growing up, the great philosopher Jody. Baby yeah. boy, Jody. Baby boy, baby boy. Yes, he. Uh, yeah, I don't really want that Jody love. Um, because <laughs> it worked. It worked out in the end. It worked out in the end. They needed to do a baby boy too, so we could see if it really worked out. Because I feel like they painted that little pretty picture for us. This pretty picnic. That's what women want. They want happily ever after. Uh, no. They don't. They want happily ever after. So they decide to get married or whatever, and then they don't. Obviously, they decide to get married i think they just moved in and lived together that so. thing, that was the goal was to just get the own place to get right. out your mama's house jody yeah. <laughs> well that's what women want they want that happily ever after they want that they want prince charming they're like all right happily, just like y'all grow up with them disney movies yep. y'all don't see yep. afterwards exactly. they don't they don't know if cinderella and that dude stayed together they don't know if the little mermaid and that dude stayed together well, who else is it? Pocahontas and John Smith? They don't know if Aladdin and Jasmine stayed together with the genie. Yeah. Hey, I like that. I think that you're exactly right. Disney? Now, Disney, for for women of my age, who are <laughs> definitely, and, and the little girls growing up now, Disney princesses, 
Yes, we that is what we want. We want to have the castle and we want to be treated like a princess. Shoot, I remember telling you in high school that like Talisha means princess. Yeah, you just made you interpret <laughs> totally it, you interpret it with your own name, man. I'm like, you can't do that. <laughs> you were telling me what Patrick meant, and I was like, shoot, I don't know what Talisha means. It means princess. Yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> Where'd that come from? <laughs> I was like, look it up. Princess. I don't think they had um, Talisha as a Spanish translation. <laughs> it's a Spanish translation. We were talking about because of Spanish class. Oh, 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 oh yeah. So I was Tatiana. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But Talisha, it, it means princess. Um, but yes. Oh my gosh. So Disney has definitely put that like deeply rooted that in our heads, which I think that you know to some extent we should be treated like princesses. Um, as, who turned into the queen to some extent, but because we only see just that last little snapshot of, and they were smiling and they lived happily ever after. Like that's kind of the expectation. And it is, it's just, the question is, okay, well in real life, how did they live happily ever after? That's the, the quote unquote end result, but what else happens? Yeah. Ha- it, yeah. What's the, what was the after party like? Yeah, half, a, happily ever after contains a lot of work, and that's why we that's why we made the podcast. How can you get to ha- happily ever after? Ain't smooth. Yeah. Happily ever after is 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 rough. Right. It is it is bumpy. There are a lot of bumps in the road towards happily ever after, and you have to get over. Yeah, there's a lot of psychological work <laughs> that goes into mm-hmm. happily ever after because we don't know what happened. I mean, uh, angrily before. Right, <laughs> I like that. I really like that. And in the in the movies and stuff, it's just like it does. It shows that moment where they're smiling and they truly are happy. But then it fast forwards to whenever ever after is, and it just kind of wraps it up in a bow for you. But we, as marriage coaches, have to help you get to that pretty wrapped bow if you will Mm -hmm. but guess what the beauty is in the eye of the beholder yes you get to decide your own happily ever after you have to paint your own picture you just can't and don't leave it vague you have to be specific about what your what you actually want your marriage to look like and a lot of uh, a lot of women think happily ever after or the process of getting to happily ever after involves the man like expressing his feelings and to mm-hmm. a certain degree, I agree. I agree with I, I well now I'm figuring it out as yeah. I went through last week and was all like stressed out and having like all this anxiety about the podcast. I'm like, oh yeah, I I need to um process these feelings. Mm-hmm. Time to go see the counselor for real, for real this time. Yeah. <laughs> so it, yeah, I understand that. But back to um um us thinking like it's a trap and our woman to hold it against us i think that comes from just previous arguments in the past like what mm-hmm. what have you said what have you said every word every word has weight to it every word has weight. every word has weight to it and like if when y'all are having conflict and fight i say fights because fights do happen verbal fights please don't let it get physical please my goodness, please don't let it get physical. I can't. That's you've, it's gone way too far, and you should never put your hands on your woman ever or on your man ever, ever. But I'm talking to the dudes, don't hit your woman, Jesus. And yeah, but fights they happen. So, whatever you said in those past, it's like, oh, that hurt. Oh, that hit me. Like, guys, we hurt. We hurt, and how we were taught to handle hurt was suck it up. Mm. I was about to add another word to it, but mm. what your coach might call you if you're out there, <laughs> out there in these streets crying. But I mean, but yeah, it's a trap. They'll use it against you. So I told you about the scenario. It's like, all right, women, you're in the office. And you, you bought your boss, your leader, the person who's in charge of you, your supervisor, is he like, and he's like super expressively expressive and emotional. He's like, I'm having such a bad day today. I don't think I'm going to make it. 
And then he goes like, then he's angry or something like that. What the heck is this wrong? Y'all respect him more for being mad at you than if he actually came out and said, I'm having a terrible day. My kid won't potty train and he's pooping everywhere in the house. <laughs> and I'm tired of cleaning up poop. And I'm just so overwhelmed. I'm a first time father. And I just don't know what to do. And this is why I've been treating you guys so bad because I'm stressed out at home. Y'all would be like, y'all would come straight back home and tell your husbands, dog, you will never believe what my boss just <laughs> did today. This dude said he is stressed and overwhelmed about cleaning up some poop from home. And that's why he's being a, a D bag at the office. Mm. Can you believe that? He's so weak. Hmm. I think that that one was very loaded. So, <laughs> first of all, how you know the boss is a man? Oh, oh, first of all, oh, I said imagine. <laughs> I said imagine. <laughs> I said imagine that okay. the boss is like that. I'm, I'm just putting it out there, females. We can be, we can be boss too. Uh, next, if the boss is exhibiting their emotions like that, I do agree. I think that I would be like they're weak, and I think that I would I would say that whether it was a a woman boss or a man boss, I I think it is good to be emotional. Granted, yes, I absolutely think it's good to be emotional. However, at work, I think that you should show some vulnerability, but not to that extent where you're like a blubbering freaking mess. No, I think that's too much. Use a different outlet. Don't tell your, don't tell, um, you're like Aaron Burr. Don't tell them what you're for, what you're against and what's on the, <laughs> happening on the inside. No, I'm just, I'm just saying like, yeah, absolutely. Tell them what's going on. Involve them in your personal life. Or at least I do. For me, I involve them in my personal life. They That's use fine. against you, dog. Well, guess what? I, it's my life. So I feel like I can defend my life. And at the end of the day, at work, you're not there to, have them accept your personal life. As long as y'all can get the things done, you need to get the things done. Now, is it the best working environment? No, not necessarily. But I, I do think that that would be considered weak. Um, but from I, you? Considered no. weak? Were you like, that dude weak? From a lot of people. <laughs> like I think that I would probably say that. But I think that for me, if if that actually happened, I would be more on the side of, oh my gosh, Patrick, like, you're never going to guess what the boss said. No, I know like, what you're going to do. You're going to be, all right, so there's this documentary called Liberty City Warriors with the, like, football kids in Miami. And they was like, as soon as we see, they're like, them cats is weak. So we own them now. We <laughs> own them. We <laughs> own them. That's what have you sense weakness. We own them now. We <laughs> own them. We own them. Okay. I would. I you gonna stay on I them. Would you, not, and you gonna stay on them. You own. We own them now. It's a route. We getting them. What I really think is, I think that it would probably open the door for me to be like, okay, well, if I'm going through something, then I know that I can go talk to this person. Oh, okay. Like, if it happened in the middle of like a big meeting, okay, yeah, I would be like, that was weak. We could have held that together a little bit longer and yeah that shouldn't happen at on that platform but i think that like more in private i guess it would be fine honestly mm. no because then the woman gonna tell the other people around the office i'm like girl oh yeah the gossip mill will start turning i do this do i just straight up broke down to me in the office yeah um he's unstable i get him about to paint hr Employee rela <laughs> employee relations. Get it's like, right. oh, this dude is an emotional wreck. He's not stable enough to handle this leadership position. And the man is supposed to be the head of the household. So if you go back and tell your man that, it's like, oh, that's not a good leadership quality to express to my wife. Yeah. Oh, Patrick, yes. You are so right. Okay, I can see. I can totally see how that could happen. If if something happened like that at work. And then they came back and told you. Then it's like, well, that's the, that's the exact reason why I don't tell you. Blah, 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 blah. I'll blah. express the anger because y'all don't, don't see that as weakness. Mm -hmm. 
But I ain't about to tell you the feeling that led to anger. I'm not even, and I'm not, I'm doing, I'm not even going to try to process it because we, it's hard. Our brains, our brains don't want to do that hard work of processing what leads to anger is because growing up, it's okay for boys to be angry. It's not okay for you to be all sad and mushy. Not, it's okay to be angry. Oh, he's angry. That's what boys do. He's mad. Yeah. So, gosh, that one, that one is hard. Exactly. That's why we don't do it. That is so hard. Because y'all think it is weak. But like I said, I think the only reason why I said it was weak was because in my head, it was like, you're in the middle of a meeting and your boss starts blah, 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 in like a big group meeting, not like a small group meeting, like a big group meeting. I think, yeah, I think that would be a little awkward. Um. But see, for if it was something where it was like a smaller setting, a more intimate setting, and that happened, I really wouldn't see it as weakness. Man, women don't respect weakness neither. And y'all, at the bottom line, y'all want men to express their feelings, but y'all going to see that as weak. Just think long term. Right? And so if you express every feeling or the feelings that you want, it was like, because basically... And then you're having to cover up or help fix or heal that wound. Then basically like you're taking care of the man and that's like the, the, and you're fixing the problem, which is masculine energy. That's Mm -hmm. not feminine energy. And if you have to use your masculine energy for so long, you can be like, I'm the man in this relationship Mm. and you're going to resent that dude. Like, I'm always fixing this stuff. This dude's weak. I should be the one being comforted and loved. Not him. This guy's weak. So I'm on him. So you just like, I'm out. Because mm. like, this dude's weak. He ain't got it. He ain't got it. He ain't got it. See, He's broken. Yeah. He's done. So we we'd rather avoid that at all costs. Right. But see, I I really believe that there's a difference between being weak and being vulnerable or being emotional. I don't think that they're synonymous. What's the difference? So someone who's weak is like, oh, you can't handle that. You can't process things. You don't know how to overcome. You like you're probably not a respected person. But whenever I think of someone who's being vulnerable or being more emotional, I don't think that is necessarily weak. I feel like it's, oh, you're actually saying what, what's the why? What's the why behind your, what you're doing? I don't think that is synonymous with weak. Emotional and vulnerability is not synonymous with weak in my head. Well, that's, well from the man's perspective, that's what they're going to think that you're going to think. Well, what do you think? Do you think that that they should be used synonymously? It depends. It depe- well, if that's my perception, that's how I'm going to conduct myself. Mm-hmm. But if I don't, then I'm going to conduct myself a different way because your thoughts lead to the feelings, which lead to the actions. Right. So, so if I don't think that it's synonymous, then, yeah, I might go out there and do it. But if I think that they are synonymous, I ain't doing it. Right. So, so what... What would you do as a man, as the, we'll say, as the generalized version of a man? Um, because generally speaking. Generic men, man. Yeah. Generic man, 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 man. Um, he probably thinks that they are synonymous. Yeah. So, so what, as a wife, what as a wife could we do? Before we get into what the wives can actually do, let me go through some more things why husbands men don't share their feelings um and i think i alluded to it earlier like we're problem solvers man sharing our emotions don't um like fix the problem they might that's just a waste of time we'd rather just get straight to the solution or the answer <laughs> it's like <laughs> I'm like, hey, I express my anger. The solution to answer is, hey, let me go to the other room. Let me calm down. You like me. I'll be better tomorrow. I'll promise I'll be better tomorrow. That's my thing. Mm-hmm. We ain't got to stay up three, four hours to break it down. Uh, well, I was like, show your work. Yeah. show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they want you to show your <laughs> show work. Show your work. You nah, you mathematics. No, I got you the answer. That's all you need. You know, I got to show your work. Here's the answer. Here's the solution. I couldn't figure it out. 
but now I got the answer. I put it on my paper, and you take off 10 points because I ain't showing my darn work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's that's why we don't want to share our emotions. Like, look, we get over it. We want we want we are fixers, man. We we'll fix it. Yeah. Uh, and another reason is we are trying to protect you. Like I said, we may not lie, but we ain't gonna tell you the emotions because I want to protect your feelings because you we don't think that you might be able to handle it. Like if you really thought want to know what I'm feeling, like if you do so, like if you're doing something or you're putting on makeup and you're super late and I'm sitting here tapping the watch and I just get in the car and I'm like <sighs> calm, trying to stay calm. I'm still gonna be like, what's your problem? You're like, what's your problem? And then you want it's like, do you want me to blow up? I just want to put on my documentary, my my little my book on tape, and get to church. <laughs> I just want to get to church. We're already late because you had to put on, you had to do the extra step, or you put on five outfits. Like, uh, is it necessary to have it out right there? Right. No, you don't. You don't want no because I'm mad. Cause it's gonna blow up. Like I said, I'm good at expressing anger. I'm not gonna say. Because you decided to put on that extra mm -hmm. outfit, I felt disrespected. And that disrespect led to my anger and frustration. Okay? Disrespect is the reason why I'm angry. Because I felt disrespected. You want me to say that? In the, right now, we can't say disrespect. We just go straight to being pissed off. Right. All right? We can express that one. That one's easy to express. And then, well, what? And then, you, well, why do you feel disrespected? Because I put on five outfits and we're already late, right? And and that part I think is just a matter of man think versus woman think. Because on my side, I'd be like, how does me putting on five different outfits disrespect you? If I look like a freaking blubbering mess because on the first mine... outfit, that would be more disrespectful to go out in these streets looking stupid. Than being late, if you're known as a man who's being punctual, and then everyone looks at you and your prestige, and oh, this the late family. <laughs> you're right. I know he used to tear my dad's nerves up. He used to even leave us. He would freaking leave us for charge. And we were like, no, daddy, come back, come back, come back, come back. No, I'm leaving. Drive yourself. Exactly. Y'all pushed the man to the edge. He, <laughs> he, and, he, and those feelings led to his actions. Yeah. Which led to leaving y'all. Oh man, you just brought back so many memories. Like I remember him sitting on the couch, ready for church. If y'all aren't ready, I'm gonna leave you. And we were upstairs trying on all these outfits. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? I'm out. <laughs> yeah, we do. I, and I agree. We we can't push you to the edge. Absolutely. Keep going with your list. Yeah, so we're trying to protect you. Like I, I we're gonna blow up on I you. Get it. Um. Like uh, going back, like you judging him or feeling less about you, feeling less about him. Like the man does not want to feel like he. The last thing he can have is like his wife feeling less about him. He would rather keep his emotions inside and have things run smoothly than express his emotions and have things go roughly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I want it to be smooth. Yeah. Because if you express his feelings, like it can get rough. It can be it can be hard if he expresses his other emotions, and you're like, I want her to feel less about me because I'm feeling this way about a certain thing, mm -hmm. or thinking the way about a certain thing. Uh, I believe that it will be taken the wrong way. That is, it's misinterpreted. Like you said, I call it disrespect. Y'all think it's disrespectful to have the wrong outfit. Completely <laughs> different thing. Like, mm -hmm. I ain't about to tell them that. They're gonna take it a completely different way. I'd rather hide it. And focus on the solution. Pick your. It's like sort of sometimes it's like pick your battles. Yeah, you don't feel like like I don't want it. Like do we have to like argue about or have a disagreement or talk about everything? Mm -hmm. Is it that important? That's not even like a high priority on my list. Um, another thing, uh, we don't want to sound needy and weak. Like for some, well, we have a perception like, oh, if you're like needy or you're like, I need to express my feelings. It sounds like you're needy or something or your wants or you let your or you let them know your desires or something. Uh, we have the perception that the generic man, 
All right, this man, is generic, man, man. generic man, man, man. <laughs> Have the per- we we think in our heads that oh, uh, if someone's needy, they're weak. Oh, golly, you can't do anything for yourself. You're needy. You're needy. You're needy. When in reality, you need to make your needs a priority. That's the reality. That's yeah. what it should be. You should make your needs a priority. But we perceive it as like, oh, you're needy and you're weak because you can't get it done by yourself. When life, is, when in reality, life was designed for you to go through life with a partner in a community and to seek help to get your stuff resolved. That's why we are always better together as opposed to being alone. But like I said, we perceive neediness as weakness. Mm-hmm. So that's another reason why we don't do it. Um. And like I said, we believe that it might, it'll do more harm than good <laughs> if we go express our feelings. Like like I said, our uh, anger in the car, if I blow up on you, it'll do more harm than good. Or how I'm feeling, if I say I feel disrespected, you'll be like, how did that disrespect you? More harm than good. We can just get to church, get there, already late, we'll be good. Um, But yeah, those, those, are, those are some that we're definitely scared of women perceiving us as weak or like feeling less about us i mean that i think that's a huge one what do you think oh yeah i think that the weakness thing is is definitely the biggest one um and like the part where you said about uh like the wife kind of did you say like judging them basically basically kind of sums it up yeah judging like judging so whenever we took the was it the disc where i got the judge oh yeah so I the took assessment, the disc yeah. assessment. I I am labeled as the judge, and um, I I know that I judge everything and I compare everything, and I that's me. That's what I do. Um, and so I think coming before the quote unquote judge, I think the wives in general are the judge, and coming before the judge, it is. It's like, oh shoot, am I gonna be found guilty, or what's gonna happen? And do I really want to put everything on the line, like up for show and up for discussion? Yeah, no, it makes sense to pick your battles. And even even though a lot of times, and not every wife is like this, but a lot of wives are. Who's generic wife, wife, wife? Ooh, generic wife, 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 wife. So generic wife, wife, wife. She she puts her emotions out there, but I think she picks her battles too. Right. She doesn't put every emotion out there because, good Lord, a man who does not emotionally connect to a wife who is oh, blah, 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 like that that's would nagging. drive him insane. No, no, that's that we will be like, that's nagging. Yes. So I think that generic wife definitely puts and decides to pick her battles too. Yeah. She doesn't just wear all of her emotions on the sleeve. But I think our overall premise is we don't express our feelings and we like know that it's a cycle. Like when I told you about emotional puke. Yeah. Like, oh, you're holding it in. You're not expressing it. You're holding it in and yeah. your stomach's hurting. Uh-huh. Your stomach's really hurting. Uh-huh. Your stomach's really, really hurting. Then it gets to the point where, oh, it's time to vomit. And then the emotional, you 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 puke emotionally on your wife and she just gets like lambasted with like this anger that we're the the emotions that we're really good at expressing like the anger right. and right. y'all's thought process is like well if you express the other feelings it right. won't get to the one that you're good at expressing exactly by the time you get to there you're like oh i'm not angry anymore because i actually processed it yep and it's kind of like you know flexing that muscle you have to think about okay well if I don't work out and I don't use my arms, well, my biceps and triceps are not going to be as great as I would like for them to be. But I'm really good at using my legs, dog. So I'm going to use my legs because that that's what I know. Meanwhile, you're over here looking like a little puny little arm man. Let me mansplain. Look, dudes are always going to work on their arms and always skip legs. <laughs> generic man, <laughs> generic man, he going to work on them biceps and triceps. He might not work on them legs. Okay. So vice versa. Then. Yeah. Flip that one. Flip it. All right. So you're going to look like, like oh, kind of like a prison dude. Yeah. Like a really big. Buff prison dude, but no but no legs. No legs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So flip it. But if you do that, then you're going to be disproportionate. You're going to be weak where it matters. And you're going to be weak legs. where it matters. That's where so your power the, is. The legs, we're trying to be like, yeah, man, I love your arms. Your arms look great. 
and I love your legs too, but you already spend a lot of time on your arms. And legs is painful. Let's work on them legs. But the legs, leg day is harder because leg day is is, is sore. You're more sore on leg day than arm day. Leg day is hard. But guess what? Whenever you think about walking, you can't walk around on your arms. You got to walk on your legs. You got to walk on your feet. And we need you to walk on your feet. So come on. Let's work on those legs. Let's work on those legs. But it's so hard. Exactly. And it's just the same as when you're when you are with a coach in the gym. It's like, but I have to tell you the part that you need to work on. Mm. I have to push you in the mm. part that you don't want to do. Mm. Otherwise, you wouldn't need a coach because you're going to do the stuff that you like to do anyway. You won't realize your full body potential without a coach. Absolutely. Uh, so, maybe wives, maybe maybe it's not your battle. Maybe you need a coach. Maybe you need somebody. The, the husbands, we, okay, here we go. Husbands definitely need somebody to talk to. And it needs to be a man, I think. Mm. Because think about it, when what happens if the man doesn't connect emotionally with his wife, but he connects emotionally with another woman? It's over then, right? It's over. Because you're it's seeking over. her approval more than your wife's approval. Yeah. And, so, and I, I don't like, a lot of dudes don't really have like close male friends where they can express their emotions to. Mm-hmm. Not that they can trust, especially if in they're all in the same crew or whatever. It's yep. like, oh, if I tell this one friend, then the whole crew going to know about it. Right. Because they think it's open information. Yep. And it's not open information. Absolutely. So they need a friend who is disconnected from the group to express their emotions to, who mm-hmm. they can actually trust. Who, uh-huh. It's like, yeah, I'm really going through it, man. Can you help hold me accountable yes. so that I can be a great husband, so I can be a great father, and so that I'm not emotionally puking on my wife when it um boils up? Absolutely. And yeah, but yeah, like all friends ain't your friends, especially if they go out there um telling all your business and stuff like that. It's like mm, you gotta have a trusted, trusted male friend and somebody who is not necessarily like involved in it. Because if it's, if you think about it, like your your friends, your homeboys, like they. They'll try to fix. They, they will. They, they want to fix. Yeah, they, they want to try to fix it, man. It's like, oh man, you all right, man? You and and they might be like, man, I don't really have the resource, so let me go tell somebody else mm-hmm. and see what they say. Right. Okay. Maybe it started out as I'm yeah. trying to help, it like, but yeah, it, it was like that was supposed to be between me and you. That wasn't right. supposed to go anywhere else. Yeah. Guys gossip too. Guys definitely gossip too. Um. So yeah. So it's. I think that it's. It's a matter of. We want, we do. We want you to show your work. Not on every problem. Shoot, we know one plus one is two. You ain't got to show me no extra Some, work on that. Sometimes, but whenever it's when you're trying to go from five hundred and seventy-two times fifty-two eighty-five. Shoot, whatever the heck that is. Yeah, you need to show your work. No. You need to show your work. Well, we rather have the calculator. <laughs> no calculator. Yeah, we we rather use the calculator. Yeah. So I think I don't know. I just I think that. That it makes perfect sense why men would want to kind of just suppress that. Yeah. And another thing, uh, if you're a wife and you do sort of gossip, if you Facebook stalk, if you are out here collecting data on Facebook and stalking people's pictures and out there calling other people names and stuff and your husband sees that, he ain't about to share nothing with you. (laughs) He ain't gonna share. He ain't gonna share a daggum thing. Cause uh, so if you're judging other people harshly or critically, not necessarily that you have to hide it, but if you're like sitting there and you're talking about, if you do talk about other people, he's gonna pick up on that and be like, well, if you think that person is going through some stuff, ah, you would, I dang sure ain't got about to tell you what I'm going through or what I'm thinking or what I'm feeling in my mind because mine's ten times worse than that. It's kind of like showing your cards in poker or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like showing your hand. And they they hide in their hand, but if they show you, they ain't about to show you your hand because my hand's worse. <laughs> this is like, mmm. But that's in char- it's in character. It, it, like, sometimes people talk about people. I think everybody talks about Everyone everybody. talks about people, and it's like, but if, it depends how you come at it and stuff. 
depends how you are. But if he, if he sees that you're critical and judging of other people, he's not going to open up. It's not a safe environment. It's, the environment is not safe for him to come out and express that. Because guys will, because men, when they are in a safe environment, will express their emotions. Think about sports and playing sports. When dudes are super happy in sports, they are slapping each other on the butt. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Smacking booties. Smacking booties. Smack that is and, not okay. Yeah, they, 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 yeah, yeah. So in that safe environment, he feels that it is safe to go smack another man on his butt. But out in the office, you can't, there's not the environment to go smack your coworker, <laughs> your male coworker on the butt. Okay. Yeah. It's like, um, what is it? Great approval. Great, great, um, house sale, buddy. And you smack him on the butt. <laughs> can't do that. Like y'all in the real estate office. That was a great sale. And you smack someone <laughs> on the butt. Or you handle that customer service call very well, charter. Just go ahead and smack your coworker on the butt. Oh, that was a great bank transaction. You slap them on the butt. Can't do that. Can't okay, do that. that's not the safe environment. Sports. Oh, I'm safe. I'm smacking him on the butt. That was a great play, buddy. Great play. Give me that booty. Hey, <laughs> the other part is in your in your house. You should be in a safe enough environment and be like, "Great job, smack him on the butt. Exactly. Great job, honey, smack him on the butt." So why do we have to create that safe space if we want if we really want them to be able to share their emotions and share what they're thinking and what's going on there in their world in their mind and it's gonna look different from how we might think it might look so just brace yourself for that it is gonna look different it is not gonna be exactly what you thought like if you think that whenever he starts expressing himself or being a little bit more vulnerable with you that it's gonna look like what it would look like if you did it you're wrong right. So brace yourself. It's not going to look that way. And whenever you brace yourself, be willing to accept what it is. Yeah. Then, then at once those, once it's um out there, you have to communicate. Yeah. Communication is like, you have to under, like uh, seek to understand mm-hmm. then to be understood. Yes. Yep. And it's really natural to be like, oh, well, that's not what I meant. Mm-mm-mm. Just. Sit there and listen for a sec. Yeah, sit there and listen. It was like, and then, and that might be another thing, Patrick. Maybe, maybe men can't freaking get their emotions out because the wife is like, oh, "Well, that's not what I meant." Whenever I did, blah blah blah. blah. You're trying and to save their own tail. Yep. Trying to try to save their own skin mm-hmm. to not. They're worried about them. Yeah. Like when you, if you want someone to open up, you gotta let your ego go. Exactly, and just be there to listen. And then at the end, if they. Need help, want help, yeah. then you wait for it. Yeah, because it is not that guys don't have feelings. We have very intense, intense feelings. Yes. It's just how we have been conditioned to express them. Yep. We got the princess syndrome and y'all got the suck it up buttercup syndrome. I love that one. Suck it up buttercup. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Back, yeah. Yeah. So like when boys are crying, man up, man up, hide it, hide it, mm-hmm. hide it. Mm-mm, that don't work. Well, they, it does work to a certain extent cause, because they're going to blow up. And that's how you get school shooters. <laughs> right. Now that, they'll preach. Yeah. So it was like, you need to be like, hey, feel, feel it out. The whole expression, like cry till you're done crying. Okay. Cry till you're done crying and then move on to the next emotion. Don't stop because you're not done processing it and your, your assignment isn't finished. Mm-hmm. And then. Your assignment's not finished. You moved on. You move on to another assignment. That's more work that yep. you got to do. And then the assignment starts to pile up. Yep. And you're overwhelmed. And then you're so. Then you look back. You're like, oh, I have all these assignments, and you're overwhelmed. You're either going to like continue to avoid it, or you're going to get angry and you're going to trash your desk. Yep. You're gonna be like you're gonna push it all away. You're gonna throw out this anger and frustration, and that's the and that's the end result of all the like work piling up. You know, and you're just like, or you break down. And you're just like, I'm out. I'm done. Mm-hmm. Or it's like you sign up for math 101 and you start doing math 101. You didn't finish it, but hey, you going to math 102 anyways. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then you didn't finish math 102. And you went ahead and signed up for calculus. Mm-hmm. You weren't ready for calculus, but you went anyways. So in the same sense, you cannot, you can't pass go. 
if you haven't done the work, like you have to do the work. You have to do the emotional work. That's why we recommend we always recommend coaching, therapy, accountability groups. Yes. Church, yes. prayer. Yes. Hopefully you got church people you can trust. Mm-hmm. But yeah, trust is out. The trust in is the trust is everything, man. Yeah, and I mean, I think that with the trust part, like people have to show themselves trustworthy because you don't just get trust. Like trust is not just granted; it's earned. Trust is earned, and I think we're gonna end on that note. Catch you guys later. Thank you for listening to On the Up and Up with Patrick and Talisha. For access to all of our episodes, please subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and wherever you listen to our show. Leave us a five-star rating and review on iTunes, and we will give you a shout-out on our next episode. Stay connected with us on Twitter and Instagram at I am Pat Ratliff and at the Farm D Mommy. Thanks again for listening, and we will see you next week. God bless.